So you want to reduce your tax liability, and that's what we're talking about. It's part two in our series of how you can legally reduce your taxes in South Africa. We're continuing with our discussion with Kantanaika. She's the head of the South African Institute of Professional Accountants. If you didn't watch part one, go back and watch part one. Just know that the content of this video is not financial advice, neither is it tax advice. How you should ideally use this content is to jot down some notes or click on the link below. I've taken down the notes for you and go to your financial advisor or your tax advisor and ask them, do these aspects apply to you? How can I make them work for me? Can they reduce my tax liability? Let's get back to that interview with Kanta Naika. So the next thing, and this is a this is a, a an interesting an interesting thing to note. Um, the next thing is the opening up a tax free savings account. Now I've come across this recently with somebody who retired, um, received his whole lump sum, and just stuck it in an investment account. Obviously, he didn't receive any advice. Received an interest of over one hundred and sixty thousand on the investment. And now has to pay in and has never paid in tax in his life and he's over 70 years of age uh, and now has to pay in um, 16,000 rand worth of tax and, and can't understand why he's being taxed. The reality is that the interest earned from that investment, the lump sum investment, um, is what's attracting the tax because there's a threshold from a from an interest uh, perspective, perspective. We call it an interest exemption. So when you receive a lump sum or you've got large sums of money and you want to you want to invest and you and you want to earn interest, interest is another source of income. I just quickly wanted to remind you about Retirement Bootcamp 2022. And this is happening in Santon on the 19th of November. Get your tickets. Click the link where you're watching this video. You've got to be very careful about how you how you uh, uh, invest it because you're going to be earning you're going to be earning interest and if that interest is over the tax thresholds you will be taxed on that interest and it's and it's it's sad to give it away. So one of the one of the things that is available to you is a um, it, it's called a thirty three thousand interest exemption investment. Uh, you can hold uh, many of these, but up to a total of about 500,000. I think it's a very uh, a, a prudent way of saving money and ensuring that you reduce your interest income. And if you reduce your interest income and you try and keep it within the, the tax thresholds, you therefore reduce your tax. So don't go giving away, you know, huge chunks of money because you've um, uh, you've now come into some money and you've invested it and you haven't invested it smartly. So what Kantha is talking about here is a tax-free investment. This was started in 2015 by government. Basically, how this works is government is saying that as South Africans, each of us, we can invest a maximum of 36,000 Rand per year and another cap at 500,000 Rand per lifetime. So if you are contributing 36,000 Rand a year, maybe it'll take you around just over 14 years or so to actually max out that 500,000 Rand. If you exceed your 36,000 rents, you any amount over that 36 is taxed at 40%. So obviously we wanna keep track of this. You can have multiple tax-free investments across different providers. However, the total must never exceed 36,000 rand. And hopefully government will change this over time to try and increase those limits, not just the 36,000, but also that lifetime limit as well. We just have to wait and see. So this is where you need financial advice to sit with a financial advisor to, to work out your various interests and strategies on how you should be allocating your money. All doesn't need to go into one interest-bearing account. It can be in various interest-bearing investments with different tax wrappers, allowing you at various exemptions at each stage. And Kantha also spoke about the interest exemption. In South Africa, natural persons under 65 to date have an interest exemption of 23,800 rands. So if that individual, if he had gotten the right kind of advice, he would have taken a portion, his 36,000 rand for that year, put it into his tax-free investment, get whatever interest he, he can get in there and withdraw that tax-free and live off that. The second a portion from his lump sum, he could then put that into uh, another interest-bearing investment. And that's where the counter will start. A rack up to interest, from 23,800 and then from there he will be charged uh, the various tax and, uh, taxation according to the tax formula. Another important thing to know about tax reinvestment, the offerings. Now we spoke about the bank interest offering. You can also have these offerings with 
asset managers, where the asset managers allow you to invest offshore, where your money is not really in, taken offshore, but you're tracking offshore performance. So that's a great way to actually get offshore exposure without utilizing your offshore allocation. This is something a little bit more complicated. You can work all of this for yourself. But like I'm saying, strategy, you got to uh, apply the taxation to that strategy. Uh, Tax-free savings accounts to minors. You can, if you've got kids that are minors, uh, they can go towards a, a minor child and that can sit in a tax-free savings account in their names. Uh, obviously, if it all sits in your own name, it becomes an issue. So learn to split out that income and get advice regarding splitting out that income and the in interest earned, etc., from those sort of investments. All right, so Kantha mentioned about the kids having tax-free investments. Really cool option for kids because now any South African child has this option to hold a tax-free investment. So this is not a place where you want to be holding your kids' education uh, savings. Okay, This is one that you want to maximize for the long term. And I speak to a lot of my clients about seeing the tax-free investment as a retirement annuity and you see it where you're not getting the same retirement benefit where we spoke about in, in part one in terms of deduct deductions and reduction in tax liability, but you're getting that tax-free withdrawal. So you got to have the discipline and the consistency to put that money away and not touch that money. So for, for kids, it's great because they have a, a longer time in the market, more exposure to the market. And remember that the longer time you spend in the market, the greater your potential for return. Uh, donations to a SARS registered ch uh, charity. Now, this has come under the spotlight recently, um, proved way in which to uh, uh, for you to give back in terms of uh, social social projects, etc. But it, but they're very specific things for this donation. So it's called a the the general sort of term is is donating to a public benefit uh, organization, donation to a uh, they talk about a Section 18A certificate organization, uh, or they say donate to us and we will ensure that you get a tax deduction for it. So those are sort of the common terms that are used with it. What does it do? Uh, it allows you, like I said, to give back um, uh, because you're wanting to, to plow back into communities, etc. But you as the taxpayer have got to ensure that that uh, entity is registered as a PBO and there's a list on the SARS website where you can go in and have a look at who the registered entities are. You've got to ensure that uh, uh, um, obviously they have to be tax compliant. They've got to, you've got to ensure that they are a compliant entity and are able to issue you with the 12A certificate timelessly. It's got to happen within that tax year. You've got to make sure that donate up to 10% of your of your taxable income. So if you go over the 10% of your taxable income, you then start obviously it's it's not it's not considered for, um, as a tax deduction. Remember that the work that needs to be done by these PBOs is, is generally uh, related to uh, healthcare and education, poverty alleviation, environmental, cultural, those sort of things. Uh, so if a very good example is the gift of the givers. I mean, we've seen the sort of splendid work they've done in the last year around the whole COVID uh, issues in the country. And if you're wanting to do a you're wanting to save some tax, you can actually donate to them and uh, receive the tax benefit certificate because they are valid a registered entity with SAS as a PBO, a public benefit organization. All right. So here Kantha's talking about that 18A certificate. Now, giving is an essential part of wealth building. If you're in a position to give, you are blessed to be a blessing and you should give. Now, not all organizations or not everything that you're passionate about is linked to an 18A. Maybe they don't have the PBO number that Kantha has to is talking about. And maybe if they don't have it, I'm not discouraging you from giving, but if you can match your passion, a passion that you, that you know, that you really care about, whether it's save the rhinos or gift of the givers. And if you can align that up with an organization that has and or issues that 18A certificate, great. Okay. If the organization doesn't, and it's re you're really passionate about it, still give. You will, you will get a return in another way, even if it's not a tax deduction. So maximum of 10%. So in our first video, we spoke about you can use up to 27.5% of your annual income into your retirement annuity. So now if you add on a full 10%, if you can live really modest and uh, really lean, you can take advantage of all these tax benefits. Okay, so add on another 10% to that. That's 37.5% where your taxable income for the year can be reduced by that much and you're paying a lot less taxes.
And like Kantha mentioned, anything, any donation over 10% is not considered as a deduction. That being said, if you feel the need to give greater than 10%, don't let that 18A stop you. There's so many people in our country that need your help if you are in a position to help them. So that's the two we covered in this video. That's the tax-free investment and uh, the 18A deduction. Check out part three. We'll be taking a deeper dive into reducing our tax liability in South Africa.